limitations on public gatherings to prevent further spread of COVID-19 and protect the health, safety, and welfare of the City of Franklin officials, staff, and citizens. The purpose of this meeting is to conduct a project review workshop. No decisions on applications will be made at this meeting. Accommodations have been made to ensure that the public is able to participate in the meeting. The public may participate in the following ways. Watch the meeting on Franklin TV or the City of Franklin website. Watch the live stream through the City of Franklin Facebook and YouTube accounts or call 615-550-8420 to listen to the meeting or voice a comment during the, the special public comment period. The public may email comments to planning intake, planning I N take at franklintn.gov to be read aloud during the meeting. Email comments will be accepted until 3 p.m. on the day of the meeting. Limited viewing will be available in the lobby of City Hall to watch the live video. So we will start with a roll call vote, roll call vote, roll call from everybody who's here. So I'm gonna say your name if you'll say here or if you're not here, then I guess you won't say your name. So uh, Alderman Berger. Present. Alderman Peterson. Here. Alderman Blanton. Alderman Barnhill. Alderman McClendon. Alderman Martin. Alderman Bransford. Here. Alderman Speedy. Present. All right, commissioners, Ms. McLemore. I, I saw you earlier, so are you, uh, I, I couldn't hear a vote or a, a hear. Here. There you go, thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Allen. Commissioner Franks. Here. Commissioner Harrison. Present. <laughs> Commissioner Lindsay. Roger, are you here? Okay. Commissioner Orr. Here. And Commissioner Solaji. Here. Great. All right, then uh, first order of business will be uh, called to order consideration resolution 2020-75, a resolution declaring that the Franklin Municipal Planning Commission and Board of Mayor and Aldermen shall meet on May the 28th, 2020 and conduct its, conduct its essential business by electronic means rather than being required to gather a quorum of members physically present in the same location because it is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in the light of COVID-19 outbreak. All right, I don't think I need a motion on that one because it's pretty clear. So uh, if there's no other business, then we'll move on to item number two, which is discussion of a development plan revision adding an additional 1200 and or 12,738 non-residential square footage, 165 hotel keys and 241 residential dwelling units to the McEwen Town Center development plan located north of McEwen Drive and west of Mallory Lane. I'll open up to the applicant for their presentation. Hey Mike, can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. All right, good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing in these time, crazy times? Good to see everybody virtually as well. Good to see people outside of my own family for once in a while in the office. <laughs> um, I'm gonna share my screen, give this a shot here. And make sure, let me know everybody sees that. Looking good. All right, so I'm going to put a highlighter on here. Okay. 
So thank you. Good evening. Uh, appreciate your time. Just want to quickly go over uh, some slides we've presented at a recent neighborhood meeting May 19th and as part of this workshop and uh, appreciate your time. But as Mike had mentioned, um, uh, we are before you for a McEwen Town Center PUD amendment. Uh, we are looking at the overall campus for this process. Um, we're asking for 12,738 square foot of commercial 165 key hotel, 241 additional residential units. Um, so basically what I have on the screen here is the full 93 plus or minus acres of the project. And this was approved back, I think in either 08 or 09 of the, the master plan when Southern land had it under control. As part of that, it had the dwell, uh, the office tower, Whole Foods, uh, south side of McEwen Drive. Um, we're focusing on basically the 45 acre campus, McEwen North Side. Um, and also, I forgot to mention, we've got members of the design team on the call, um, representatives from the developer from North of Raven, Jeff Furman and Adam Bausch from Boyle. So we've got those people on the line if that need answers some questions. Um, so that's kind of the overall big picture. Um, as you know, this is a dynamic mixed use office, class A space, restaurant, boutique, restaurants, retail, casual dining, fine dining, office buildings with residential currently under construction. So next slide, focusing in on the kind of 45 acre proper, which is outlined in this red zone here, north side of McEwen. Um, it's broken up into several blocks, as you know, A, B, C, and D are currently under construction. Uh, we're focusing on amendments to blocks D, E, F, and G. So we're, we previously had a PUD amendment for blocks D and D, which was approved by the Planning Commission. We're coming in to amend that piece, but making changes to block F and G. So first glance, we're looking at a, a six-story office building with ground floor retail on block D a 10-story mixed-use office building, retail, commercial, ground floor on this building here, a seven-story hotel at this corner, 165 keys, a five-story mixed-use residential uh, above ground floor commercial, and then two blocks of residential um, urban wrap, multifamily parking deck wrap with interior amenities on blocks F and G along Jordan Road. But before I get into kind of the details a little bit, I'd like to just share a quick video of, and most of you may have been out there, but just want to share kind of what's under construction. This is a recent video of what's built out there. So you can see the seven story office building, ground floor retail, active retail in these spaces, uh, a one story retail here, the beginnings of the Central Park and the initial jewel box of Jenny's, but we coming in with two jewel box flanking both sides of the park. You start, start to swing around into- Hey Gary, this is Adam Balish. Uh, you may want to slow down for a moment while the video uh, uh, buffers. Good call, appreciate that. I'll start over here. Yeah, there's nothing on the screen. Just the YouTube address. Let me know when it's going. Is it not sharing? Nothing yet. Hmm. Um, Gary, typically when you share screen, if you like select a specific app that it's running or a specific program, it'll only share that program. So you may need to tab out over to the YouTube uh, window or it's something with how the screen share works here in Zoom, because it takes over just a program rather than the entirety of the screen, I believe. Well, that's a bummer. Um, huh. Hey, Gary, it's Scott. I actually tried to watch it earlier too, also, and it would not pull up either. Me too, I did too. It never came up. Interesting. Let's see if I can... Uh...
Well, I'm not sure if I can get it to work then. Well, that's not good. Still nothing? Nothing. Oh, that's no fun. That takes all the fun out of it. Well, I might have to bypass that piece. I don't want to waste your time holding you up on that, but uh, um, hopefully most of you have been out there and seen the activity. Um, I'll share my other screen here. Let me know when you're back to seeing my screen. I see it. I'm good. Okay, good. So back to the master plan. Um, these are just kind of snapshot images. This is kind of the portion of the project that is under construction. This is the seven story office building, ground floor retail, one story retail here. Um, the Central Park on Aspen Grove Drive, the Festival Street. A lot of this is under construction other than this foreground jewel box. Jenny's ice cream is off in the, in the distance here. Um, and then we have the existing under construction first phase of residential units and then the structured parking behind. Um, so very active space, walkable. Um, as I said, live, work, and play environment. Another snapshot of the existing office tower fronting Aspen Grove Drive, the park, the adjacent residential that's under construction, 341 units initially coming out of the ground. In the background, there's a, an approved uh, six-story office building along McEwen Drive and then the hotel in the background along McEwen. So as you know, a lot of construction underway, um, very, um, successful in terms of bringing in tenants and uh, office and both restaurants and retail. So getting back to the master plan, um, the initial overall PUD was entitled for, and this includes the entire 93 acres again, was entitled for 1,144,000 square feet of commercial, 950 residential units, which, which included the dwell that's currently built and 150 key hotels. So that's what's currently entitled. Over time, we've been submitting in projects for all these blocks, A, B, C, and D. Uh, we have uh, the hotel under, under construction in this corner. We've recently submitted other pieces of block A as well for site plan approval. B is under construction. The apartments are under construction. At the intersection of Aspen Grove Drive and McEwen is the Perry Steakhouse under construction. So back to blocks D and E, we're asking for additional square footage. So D is proposed to be a seven story, uh, six, six story office building with ground floor retail below, a 10 story office building flanking the park and the seven story building across the street on Aspen Grove Drive, a seven story hotel at this corner here of Spring Creek Drive and Aspen Grove Drive, a five story mixed use residential 30 units above commercial or the option of a for sale product potentially on this, this block here. All serviced by ancillary parking on the street, standard parking spaces on street parking and structured parking. Blocks F and G were proposing two buildings. Both of these units or both of these blocks will encompass 225 units, each building four to five stories in height, matching the character of block C across the way on Aspen Grove Drive. Same architectural style, massing, um, upscale finishes, a custom, a custom, the home, uh, custom home details, tall ceilings, hotel corridors, rich amenities. So 225 units in this block, 225 units on this block for a total of 480 in this area here as part of the 241 additional residential units. So again, we're just asking for the 241 in addition to the currently approved 950. Central amenity courtyards between the two, as I mentioned, structured parking, we've got the two existing ponds along Jordan Road and Aspen Grove Drive that they front onto. Down in the corner here is a uh, floodplain, uh, pres preserved open space, uh, Got some buffers along the stream near South Prong Creek. So some of these units face out into the green space or over the, the existing detention and within the internal courtyards. I'll quickly go through just some slides of the massing and character. Um, this initial slide 
is a 3D perspective kind of showing what's out there now. Um, we've got the hotel building at McEwen Drive is up to the top of the page, Jordan Road here at the bottom. Um, so we've got the hotel under construction, the office tower on the green under construction. These are existing 341 units. So we're talking these blocks here, blocks D, E, F, and G. So it kind of shows the massing of the, the office building here on the park, the hotel in this location, structured parking in the rear, the five-story mixed-use building on Spring Creek Drive that's bisecting this parcel here. And then you can see the two blocks of multifamily, four to five stories in height, 225 units each. These are just quick snapshots. And I can, we can go back to these, but these are just kind of visual snapshots that we have part of the submittal share with a neighborhood meeting, showing the massing of the buildings, uh, just building a sense of place, the walkability, live, work and play environment, uh, buildings talking to each other, relationships of the street, uh, walkability. Uh, this slide shows the existing Block B building on the park along Aspen Grove. This whole side of the street is what we're proposing with the 10 story building, seven story hotel, and then the four to five story residential. Swapping views a little bit, we're back on Spring Creek Drive, kind of crossing through here, Aspen Grove Drive, bisecting this way. This is the new Block D and E office building, hotel, mixed use residential commercial building, structured parking. You start to see a little bit of the wrap of the residential here in Block F. Next one, we can see in the background, the proposed blocks D and E with the office, 10 story office, hotel, and the streetscape of the four story residential units. This shot here is coming up from Jordan Drive, heading towards McEwen, starting to enter into the corridor of the residential streetscape as you come into the site with the backdrop of the mixed use buildings, hotel, and some of the buildings under construction. A snapshot of down Spring Creek Drive showing the relationship between the mixed use residential above commercial with straight up residential on the right side for Block F. The hotel site at this corner of Spring Creek Drive and McEwen and the 10 story building adjacent that and then the residential next to that on Block F. Jewel box in the foreground within the park along Aspen Grove Drive. So that's kind of the overall snapshot of the project. Also, a couple of things we've added, uh, want to talk about real quickly. We've asked for a modification of standards for the buildings on blocks F and G, uh, working with Amy and Joey on asking for a modification to limit the ground floor access just due to grades, relationships to the stream, uh, some of the existing detention, much like we did on Block C. There's there's a few individual interests on Block C, but we're really limited on Blocks F and G due to grades and topography. We really want to activate the Spring Creek Drive, so we'll have some access points along Spring Creek Drive for Building F, but nothing along Aspen Grove or the perimeter, just given the open space and the internal courtyards. As part of the additional 241 units residential, we hit, we are obligated as part of the parkland dedication. So we've been working with Kevin Lindsay and his staff to work through those documents. It's in the magnitude of $1 million in terms of parkland fees. We're offsetting that um, with internal amenities within the project trail improvements. Uh, we're looking at a proposed trail connection along Jordan Drive to as you know, this portion of northern piece of uh, Jordan Road back to McEwen, we want to make that permanent connection from Jordan Road to the trail that's kind of running by Dwell to connect that piece. So that's part of that parkland dedication. And we have a lot of internal walks and trails as well, but also some neighborhood amenities that are part of that. So working through that with the city. Um, but yeah, I'm, I think that's kind of the close of the presentation, but respectfully ask if you have any questions regarding what I've went through density wise or otherwise, um, be glad to assist. All right, thank you, Gary. Um, sure thing. I'll open it up to um, the Alderman and Commission. If anybody has any comments, uh, please unmute yourself and uh, we'll...
Got a question? Please. How does the height of building E compare to the office building beside uh, Whole Foods? That is, I think, a seven story building at Whole Foods. And across the street from our, on this side, we, we have a seven story built or yes. Yeah, Commissioner story. or this is Adam Ballish with Boyle. Um, the building E is 10 stories uh, proposed block B is seven. Um, but the Whole Foods existing kind of Southern land office tower um, is only seven stories, but from the topography change, it sits up quite a bit higher. So from a, um, skyline standpoint, uh, I don't believe we are taller than the top of those buildings there or the Drury um, and are in keeping with the uh, overlays in Envision Franklin and matching what's proposed there. So we're not we're not requesting any changes to, to that information. So uh, we think in our um, dealings with the staff that uh, the because of the site topography falling to the north that we're still kind of well within the, the guidelines of the height overlays. Hopefully that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you, Michael. Anybody else? Hey, Mike, this is Scott. I got a question. Yes, sir. Are there any plans for improvements on Jordan Road uh, all the way from Mallory Lane up to McEwen Drive? Yeah, there is. Um, yeah. Once again, this is Adam Ballish. Uh, we've been working with uh, the city engineering department and Lance may be able to speak up to this, but um, to my knowledge, that project is fully funded for construction by 2023. Um, and so we're coordinating or already have our improvements when we opened up Aspen Grove to Jordan Road. Um, the improvements that we've done are accommodating what the city is in final design, you know, in preparation of letting that, that work. Great, thank you. All right, any other comments? I'll, uh, at, at the end of this, I'll go through each, everybody and make sure we go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I can wait if you call, go by the roll or whatever. I just, I have one question. Yeah, please. Okay, um, par parking along the retail, is that is that an option or do you have to go into a structured parking garage? Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Um, the retail space, is that all walkable? Is there, is, are there, can you park next to the establishment? Hi, Ms. Bransford, this is Adam Ballish again. Um, there, there are parallel parking stalls on every street um, in within the McEwen uh, development. And then we're trying to also provide um, what we kind of call teaser spots, uh, more so to accommodate the retail users that are on the surface parking stalls. Um, so you'll see behind block E that there's a lot of surface uh, parking stalls between the deck and the mixed use building. So our goal between the street parking on the parallels and then the surface lots is that for a lot of those services that are um, quick in and out uh, retail opportunities that folks can um, you know, use that surface stall and, and we will be, Boyle will be um, the property manager in leasing and maintaining these commercial properties. And one thing that we will restrict is any kind of long-term parking in the surface stalls so that the office users will be directed to the decks so that the surface stalls can be more of a, more accommodating to the patrons. All right, Alma, I saw you had a comment. Uh, yeah, I, did I hear you say that some of these would possibly be for sale units or is everything going to be rentals? I did mention that, Alma. This is Gary. Yes, um, the, the, we are offering a greater than 10% increase of the 241 units in this building here. There's 30 units in this building above the commercial that are, have the potential for for sale product, um, 30 units above the commercial here in this five-story building. Blocks F and G are for, for rental attached residential. Okay. Because we're wanting to see more for sale units because we have so many rentals and, and we just have such a shortage of um, townhomes and units that are for sale. Yeah. Uh, and we just, it, it, it would just be a good thing for us to be able to have more come out of this project. Understood. That's why we wanted to accommodate a, a, a percent increase of some for sale product within the residential component. 
offer a variety. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. All right, anybody else before I just go down the roll? Mike, can you hear me? Yes, yes I can. Okay, somehow during this whole presentation, my screen went off. I see everybody and I can hear you and I can see the people on here, but the whole presentation went off. So I was trying to get back on my other computer here to look at. Um, Mine went off too. <laughs> but yeah, I couldn't see a thing. I so uh, yeah, I hate it. But uh, I was able to pull up the um, presentation um, on um, my Surface computer here. So. Um, yeah, so we talked about, oh gosh, the for sale units. Tell me again how many for sale units are going to be in here. We are proposing the 30 units above the commercial on Block E along Spring Creek Drive. Oh, oh, Block E on Block E, yeah. So, man, I, I just wish, I'm with Elma, you know, we've talked about this. Adam, you, we've talked about it. Uh, it. It's just, we need more for sale in here, but to be a truly mixed use, uh, really well done. And I, I think you guys are doing a fabulous job over here. It's starting to look really, really nice. Um, I would just wish that we could get a few more sales for sale in here. Uh, we're getting an overabundance um, and that's a debatable thing. Everybody keeps debating how many apartments are uh -huh. in, but we become, we have more and more and more coming online and less and less the townhomes coming online. The 30 just doesn't seem like sufficient. You know, if we had a hundred townhomes, I, I would be a lot more comfortable with that. So I know Adam, when you guys go back to the drawing board and take a good look at this, um, you know, everybody throws out the argument, oh, what's available for, you know, um, uh, what's the bank, you know, giving us loans on, you know, is it apartments, is it condos, is it townhomes, things of that nature. So I, I think it's, I know it's a tough thing in some ways, but I would just love for you all to put more for sale in here because we've got so many people looking for those. And Alma is absolutely right. I'm contacted all the time about that. Um, let me ask you though, uh, what's, what's the name of that um, spring, Spring Creek Drive? Um, right. Okay, how do you distinguish between that property as it goes into Spring Creek? Because you don't follow out with Spring Creek Drive where it is. The, the drive ends right there for your property, but it goes all the way through. And right. uh, how are you guys going to have any kind of entrance way? I'm sure you're going to have some kind of thing, you know, pillars, entrance way, marquees, whatever, mm -hmm. up on McEwen. How about back on Jordan and how about on Spring Creek Drive? What what says you're coming into North McEwen? Anything, any plans for that? That's a great question, Alderman Berger. This is Adam Ballish. Um, we have, uh, we've built some monumentation um, along McEwen as you're suggesting. Um, Gary's firm has designed um, additional monumentation for us at the Spring Creek um, East uh, Drive there near behind CarMax, as well as the Jordan Road uh, entrance. Um, we have have those, um, I think, laid out on the uh, um, some of the site plans that KVD and Kimley Horn have worked on with us. At this point, we've chosen not to construct those simply because of the fact we think they'll get demolished by the, you know, potential future uh, work. But you're exactly right. We would... Um, propose some monumentation at those locations to uh, help designate that you're entering this, what we think will be a special district. Okay. Well, I, I wouldn't expect them to be put up until the proper time. So they won't be uh, injured, demolished, whatever. Uh, thanks on that. Uh, two other things real quick. Um, how, how are, I'm going to talk about the water features in the back, uh, how they're going to be, uh, are they going to be filled and maintained? Is there a fountain? Is there lighting? Is it going to be a feature? Um, I think we talked about that one time, but I, I've forgotten. And sure. I think that needs to be. No, that's a, another great question. Um, we are in the process now on block C that's highlighted on the screen or shown on the screen. Um, of uh, fine grading that area around the pond so we can begin landscaping. Um, and then we um, are working with Middle Tennessee Electric now to finalize the electrical connections for a fountain 
uh, in those ponds that will be uh, uplit um, at those ponds in a very tasteful manner. Um, and so we would continue that treatment on Block G. Uh, right now it's operating as a storm detention pond for the construction. Um, but both of those would be cleaned up and be kind of an arrival entry point um, at that key intersection of Jordan Road and Aspen Grove. Yeah, I, I think you need to make the most of that. I remember you talking about that, but thanks for the update. And one last question. Uh, I know that the city's got to get busy and we've got to get Jordan Road out to uh, Mallory done because that's a, gonna, that's a heavily traveled road already. Uh, but from your point, coming out uh, on Asper Grove Drive to Jordan, if you if you do go left, which would take you to McEwen, uh, I can't remember about this either. Are we, are you going to construct, uh, clean that all up, make that look good all the way out to McEwen and actually put walking and bike trail along there? That's what we're proposing. Um, we've been in conversations with Franklin Square Partners that owns the Franklin yeah. Synergy Bank building. Um, that right of way was abandoned during that project and I think deeded over to the property owners um, of that building. Gary, if you could highlight where that building is um, there. So um, that's Hank Brockman and other officials from the um, Franklin Synergy, or I guess still their current board, um, Richard Harrington and others. And so they've expressed an interest in allowing for that multi-use easement there um, of which we would work with the parks department to then open that up. And um, like you said, have that um, that full kind of city of Franklin bike lane width that goes back to McEwen. And then obviously north south ties into the Aspen Grove network and you can um, interconnect, which we've all learned uh, during this, this uh, quarantine is an important uh, connectivity to be able to bike and get out and walk. But um, we're excited about our residents being able to be able to walk over to the Aspen Grove Park and get onto the trails that are um, even getting ready to be prepared to come under Mac Hatcher and things of that nature. Yeah, it's too bad that we couldn't have Jordan Road all the way open to McEwen. I think that would have been absolutely fabulous to have that other access, but we don't have that. But I think uh, it's extremely important. Uh, and if you, you need our help or the city help or anything, please let us know because we need, we need that access open to bikers and pedestrians uh, to get people over to McEwen to down, down to Aspen Grove. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna go down through the list so that we've got time uh, for our last item. So Alvin Berger, did you have anything else you wanna add? Uh, no. Okay, Alderman Peterson, anything you'd like to add? No, and I've got somebody mowing my yard, so I'm going to be on mute for oh, a while. Oh, okay. That'll work. Um, <laughs> Alderman Bransford, anything you want to add? Yeah, I do want to add the, the consideration of for sale units in the, in the complex. So please uh, look at that. We, I think ownership in this complex will be vital to our community. Okay, thank you. Alderman Speedy? My only question would be just the impact of schools with the additional 241 units, just how many more students are anticipated? I can answer that if you wish, if I can do that. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so uh, I just sent letters off to the school district for, this is zone for special, uh, Franklin Special School District um, and Centennial High School. Um, based on the additional 241 units, it would be a, estimated 55 school-age children generated from that, given just multifamily attached residential. So 55 students throughout those schools. Okay, uh, thank you. Gary. capacity at FSSD and probably Centennial as well. I'm sorry, did you say that again? I was gonna say, I'm, I'm assuming FSSD has capacity for those kids as, as well as Centennial. And Alderman Speedy and our most, this is Adam Ballish, in our most recent conversations um, with those folks, we have heard that they had um, some capacity of, at FSSD. And then I think based on the most recent kind of rezoning plans, there was a little bit of buffer room within Centennial 
And then obviously this project will contribute towards the uh, Williamson County school impact fees to help them, you know, accommodate any additional uh, capacity needs that they may have. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner McLemore, any comments? I gave mine earlier. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner you Franks. Oh, okay, thank um, you. Um, I do have some concerns. Um, Adam, I'd like to know what the uh, market analysis, uh, and if you know this, uh, how deep is the market for apartments in our MSA, so to speak? Um, you know, that we know we've got a lot of growth. We know the next 10, 15, 20 years is going to uh, need, there's going to be a huge need for a lot of housing. We know that uh, right off the corner in the interstate, the, the restrictions to build single family houses have gone to almost one unit per acre. So the, you know, we've, there's not a gap between affordable housing and, 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 and high end homes. So, I mean, there's, there's not uh, a really good uh, market for, um, you know, uh, you know, middle-class earners or even, um, blue collar workers. So, um, I echo, uh, Beverly and Elm and all, uh, to the extent that we really need to start blending more for sale units in. Um, but I understand the constraints about those two, you know, you can't start selling, uh, um, multifamily in a six story building and then have the risk of a water leak or a problem with a roof leak or something like that, that then you get a class action lawsuit. And so that's why there's not a lot of, uh, I mean, you can't have a lot of tenants or homeowners suing the developer over one mistake inside of one person's unit. So that's why it's so difficult to get the financing for multifamily when you, when you stack them up and they'll stack flats like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so there, I understand the apartment need, but um, I'm kind of asking a lot of different questions and, and can you uh, expand on do we need 5,000 more apartments in the next 10 years? Do we need a thousand or more apartments? I mean, do you have any uh, market uh, study there that uh, uh, supports your request for more density? Sure, I, I think I understand your questions, Jimmy. Um, so I, I think a couple things, then I'll, I'll, I'll encourage uh, our partner, uh, Jeff Furman with uh, Northwood Raven, our, is our apartment development partner on this project to speak up as well. But, you know, we continue to see a, we're, I believe the stat is accurate. We're the largest commercial office um, and commercial space landlord in, in Franklin. And we continue to see, as, as you all know, um, just a huge uh, influx of commuters every day for that uh, um, market. I believe in excess of even 50,000 a day in that, that commuter in population. And so um, the, the apartments, we, we still do feel that there is a market there as it relates to uh, the depth of that based on the commute in. Uh, option and not everybody being able to afford the the for sale product that that you were making reference to, but um, I think a couple things and and Jeff uh, Furman, our partner, can speak to this some more is that um, a lot of the things that we're doing at McEwen um, are not only to help accommodate some of those users um, or, or commuters with the mixture of housing that we hope to provide. But then also um, for this to be kind of a destination location for some of the renters that would uh, are all, almost having a, a kind of rent by op or rent by choice um, scenario instead of being forced to rent, um, and, and based on some of the amenities and things like that that we're providing. But uh, Jeff, do you want to speak more to some of your old research on the the background or the depth of the market? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I don't know most of you, but thank you for, for having us tonight. Um, like Adam mentioned, I'm with Northwood Raven. Um, we are a multifamily company. We, we work in um, six different states, eight different metro markets all across the Southeast. And, you know, we are, we are honored to be working in Franklin. It's a, a very unique place. Um, you know, for us, um, we have done, we have built a variety of housing types, over 20,000 units. Um, 
we feel very strongly that in a mixed use environment, we need to maintain most of the control. As you can imagine, um, we've been sued by different HOAs when we have done a big mix. The HOA will decide, well, we don't, we don't like the Chinese food restaurant. We don't like Jimmy John's. We don't like Jersey Mike's. We're not really um, negotiating with any of those folks, but you can imagine the sensitivity, um, the karaoke bars, those different things. So we build these things to own them for a, um, a long time. And so we take a very long-term view at what we're doing. Um, our, our units are expensive. We're at the top of the market. Like Adam said, um, our folks are choosing for the type of lifestyle. Um, I'm biased because that's my business, but that continues to grow. If you look at across the nation, single family permits are falling. Um, you know, we see growth in the for rent spectrum really across the board from young people who have high expectations to, um, you know, people who are corporate. You know, it used to be that the advice, if you had three years, um, they would say buy a house and you will create wealth. You know, nowadays that is stretched to more like seven years. Um, I hope none of you are single family brokers because they'll maybe argue with me, but um, that, that time has probably doubled. So just a lot of reasons. We also see um, a lot of older folks are crazy community. And so they also want to live in a, in a mixed environment with different people. So um, I hope that at least answers your question uh, why the uh, work play that um, you know our, our solution is mostly rental. Yes sir thank you very much. All right thank you Jimmy. Um, Commissioner Harrison. I'm good thank you. Okay uh, Commissioner Orr. No additional questions. And Commissioner Salaji. I think the only thing I would uh, comment on is just, yeah, the um, if there would be a possibility of increasing the for sale units, but I do understand, you know, what you're you're saying is that it can there can be issues with it as far as HOA and legal. But I think just if I have to look at Franklin as a whole, um, yeah, that is that is a thing for Franklin is uh, more for sale units uh, would that that's something I would like to see here. Mike, okay. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Uh, I I think uh, I understand those reasons, but they can be worked around. Uh, it takes a little work, but they can be worked around to get more for sale units in there and deal with the HOA issues and everything. Uh, how about? Um, and I know you want to do retail or commercial retail on the bottom floor. Um, but e even so, uh, go down to Berna Vista in, in Nashville, right there by uh, Germantown, and take a look at uh, Ludlow Row. Ludlow Row is um, uh, st uh, flats, uh, stacked, uh, well, not stacked flats, they're um, like a row house, um, three stories, but they start at the base level first level, second and third level with a rooftop. So they each have their own individual units. And I'm wondering even if you wanted to put retail on the bottom of that, could you not do retail on the bottom and start it with the second floor and do second and third floor, even with the rooftop area that those people could access, uh, go to L Ludlow Row, look at it. It's on 10th Avenue. It's done extremely well. And I think those would fit here perfectly. And you could still get, it, it's also, if you've been down to 12 South, um, well, they, they do have different, uh, above Jenny's Ice Cream, you have Jenny's Ice Cream and then you've got apartments above that, but they do have more than one, one floor above that. But what you're, you're saying, what I've heard you say tonight is that our problem is somebody above has a, a leak and it goes through to the other, story well how about using those vertical stories first story retail second and third all belong to one unit so they go vertical and that way you don't have anybody above you and the only person you have below you would be the retail if, if you so choose to keep that on the on the street level 
But anyway, I, I'd like, I, I really appreciate all discussing that some more because we do need more for, we need more for sale units and to be a truly mixed use and a, and a really great development, I think having a better mixed use of that for sale is, is would enhance it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Bev. So um, because we're running short on time, let's go ahead and move on to the next item. Thank you, applicant. Chair Chairman Hathaway, this is Commissioner Allen. I'm here. I was late to the party, but I am Oh, hi, here. okay. I just would like to add that my uh, concerns were the same as Alderman Speedy. It was addressed, but uh, the one thing that I did want to make sure that I heard correctly that mm -hmm. although uh, first through eighth grade would be uh, Franklin mm -hmm. Special School District, that Winston County Schools were consulted as far as Centennial High was uh, okay. concerned. Okay, thank you so much. All right, let's uh, move on to item number three which is discussion of Envision Franklin Amendment for lot widths and lot size minimums for uh, alley loaded single family lots. Staff? Uh, let's see, let me request to share. Can everyone see that? Did it change over for everybody? Getting some nods, great. Yeah. Yes. All right. So this is a similar PowerPoint to one that you all have seen a handful of times, uh, but I believe it's been recently updated um, since the last conversation that we had a couple months ago regarding this, but we'll go over just a quick overview of everything and then what staff is currently proposing um, to come before you next month on the 25th. So the existing policy for single family conservation subdivision and mixed residential lots um, with the rear loading um, alley garage is a 45 foot minimum lot width with a lot size of just under 5,000 square feet. Um, what staff is currently proposing is a 40 foot minimum lot width with a minimum lot size of 4,000 square feet and then up to 15% of the total units um, can be narrower than this, um, as long as they're interspaced. And then if there's parking, drainage or infrastructure concerns, those need to be adequately addressed before that percentage of allowance can be given. So these recommendations are based upon um, just the development requests that staff have been seeing, some of the existing neighborhoods that we already have approved and that exist here in Franklin. Um, just some of the feedback that we received from all of you um, during previous versions of this presentation, as well as during our bus tour. Um, and then just the, the previous standard for what, you know, traditional is and how um, the community is growing and how times are changing and what people are wanting. So if we take a look at some of the existing neighborhoods that we have that have um, a percent of lots narrower than 45 feet, you can see they kind of range quite a bit um, with South Brook Ring only or almost 40% um, to Lockwood Glen being about 10 and everyone sort of hovering around there. So now this is the percentage of total units that are just less than 45 feet. Now on this next slide, this is the lots narrower than 40 feet in width. So this would fall into that percentage that would be maxed out at 15% as long as they're interspaced. Um, so again, we have Lockwood Glen about 10%, Southbrook um, anywhere between 34 feet and 40 feet in width being 20% of the units. Echelon and Water's Edge having none less than 40 feet. Um, and Simmons Ridge being 12%. So again, a wide range of the number of units in each different development, but um, they are existing in some of our previously developed neighborhoods. So when we say interspaced, um, there's a couple ways that we can think about this. This graphic shows um, just alley loaded lots that would meet the 40 foot minimum width, which would be all of the non-shaded rectangles that you see. And then the shaded lots would be narrower than 40 feet and are interspaced along the block face. So this is one way to look at it, where if you're driving down the street, 
you see a handful over here and then a couple further down the street with the standard sized lots, um, you know, intermingling between them. Now, if we take a look at this, this is over in Lockwood Glen. Um, we have a huge mix of different types of housing between townhouses, single family, alley loaded single family, large lot single family. So it is possible that, you know, when we say interspersed, um, rather than having them all on one block face, maybe it's, it's a half a block face here or half a block face there, um, just interspersing the narrow lots you know, could be done on one block where the next block over they're standard sized. Um, so there's two different ways that we can think about this being, you know, the larger um, intermingling in this example versus on a single block face on the previous page. So um, this is just a quick refresher for everybody since we haven't seen this since February. Um, but with today's joint conceptual workshop being um, held, then it looks like we are scheduled to bring this before the Planning Commission on June 25th um, for the public hearing. So um, I believe that's the last slide, yeah. So if anybody has any questions, I will do <clears throat> my best to uh, help answer those as well as we have a handful of other staff here that is much more well versed on the history uh, of this <laughs> than I am so all right before we do that I'm going to go down the list because we are running short on time um, so I'll start with Al um, Alderman Berger do you have any comments not not right now I, I have probably some questions later but I'll hold my comments. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Peterson. Nothing right now. Okay. Uh, Alderman Bransford. I'd like to disperse the three, five, two, three, five. So that's, I like that. So for now, that's my comment until we get to our, our next meeting. Okay. Alderman Speedy. I mean, I like it. I think it gives the developers a little more flexibility. We talk about different, more variety of economic price points. Uh, I think it's a step in the right direction. Okay. Commissioner McLemore. Elmer, um, are you still there? All right, then uh, Commissioner Al Allen. Okay, I'm going to say this. The one thing I want to see, I, 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 I'm going to work with everybody on this and not be the stick in the mud and all of that, but I do not want to see us pass a change and then come back and hear somebody want us to concede and start changing this thing. Guys, once we make an agreement and we discuss and make an agreement, I'm, I'm not going to want to, I'm going to be very, very agitated when we start conceding on this thing. So let's, let's discuss this. Let, let's come to an agreement and then let's hold the line on it. Uh, okay, Chairman, Chairman, can I make a comment now? There you are. Okay. Uh, yes, I concur with Scott. I think this is uh, a lot better. And I also agree with uh, Commissioner Allen that, you know, we've had a lot of discussion on this and I think we've come to a really good, um, you know, the, what we've got right now, I think is, is fairly, is very good. So I, I'm, I feel good about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Franks. Oh, you know, I got a lot to say about it. Um, <laughs> but I think it is a good step. Uh, I, I, I really think that, uh, before I design a plan, I need to bring it in with staff and let them help me lay out the plan because it's most convoluted and confusing, uh, ordinance to uh, the person that can't understand it and get it right on the front end. I'll never, it'll take me two years to get the plan laid out right to where I can provide a mixed use for single family housing. Um, and that's just my gut tells me that to answer Marcia's question, we are, uh, she can count on uh, some modification standards and probably some uh, requests, but I would suggest that an applicant come in before we spend 
thousands of dollars to plan a project to sit down with staff and let staff, which they do, they do a great job of that, and lay out this subdivision for me or lay out this infield development and what is the, uh, what's the, the layout that uh, I can count on bringing forward uh, to, um, you know, so I can complete my financial model before I spend all the money. It's kind of my fault. All right, thank you, Commissioner Franks. Uh, Commissioner Harrison? Uh, I think we're going in the right direction, but I think it's going to have a lot of discussion when we get together with it on the next planning commission meeting. All right, Commissioner Orr? I like it. Looking forward to supporting it. All right, Commissioner Solaji? Yeah, I think it's in the right direction, and it should help to uh, uh, probably not eliminate, but definitely reduce um, modification of the standards. And... Um, yeah, Jimmy, you brought up an interview. Yeah, kind of a good point on that is that, uh, especially on the, you know, interspersed lots, you know, and I see the diagrams and all that, but um, I'm wondering now if that language could be tightened up to be a little bit more specific, or, you know, the question is, does that get us into trouble if it's too tight and then, you know, then it's uh, causing more issues, you know? with more specific language. So I, I don't know if there's an answer on that, but I think this is uh, completely in the right direction. I think it's always hard to have a regulation that covers every situation. So that's part of where our judgment and our uh, expertise skill uh, comes into play for sure. All right, any other last comments before we adjourn? Uh, Chairman, this is Roger Lindsay. Hey, I've been with back. you for a little while. I had a little trouble logging in. Yeah, I, I uh, in, in agreement with uh, with this change. Uh, I still um, I still want to be careful that as we work in areas like the, the what I described earlier as the the northwest portion of our of our city, that the farther you get away from the interstate, the more impact these higher densities are going to have. Um, and you know, seeing seeing a proposal that has a staggering number of, of small lots requested as a modification of standards is, is something that uh, would cause me some heartburn. And I think, you know, the closer we are to the interstate, uh, maybe the less impact on our inner city infrastructure there is. So um, good with this. Okay, thank you. All right, if there's no other comments, then uh, we're going to adjourn this meeting and then we'll get back together at seven o'clock for our main meeting. Thanks everybody for being here. Thank you, Mike. See you in 30. Thank you.